earlier topic we have learned that there are mainly two habitats they are land and water the living conditions in these habitats differ the living conditions within a habitat also differ based on the geographical location temperature etc let us examine the land habitat first land is divided into specific geographical area they can be plains mountains deserts polar ice caps etc the movement of the animals is also restricted they generally do not move from a given geographical area they have adapted themselves to the areas where they live in they may not survive if taken to another geographical area they have developed special characters which help them to survive in that particular geographic area if a polar bear is brought to a hot climatic condition it will die if the animals in a rainforest are taken to deserts they die Water is the most essential factor for survival. On earth there are regions where water is available throughout the year. Water is available or the rainfall is only during some seasons. Deserts receive no rain or very less rain. More number of animals can be seen in areas where there is rainfall throughout the year. very few animals are seen in deserts and polar regions grasses tall trees with broad leaves and a large number of herbivorous animals are found in areas where there is good rainfall carnivores which feed on herbivores are also found In areas where water availability is less the plants are generally short and the leaves are short and narrow which reduces water loss by transpiration very few animals are found In deserts some plants do not have leaves and photosynthesis is carried out by the stem In some plants the leaves are layered by a wax like substance which prevents loss of water Desert plants store water in their stems In areas where there is water shortage animals have adopted to live in burrows They consume food which has more fat the excretory product is uric acid it is in the form of pellets and no water is lost it is observed in many invertebrates reptiles and birds the excreta of birds has white pellets and brown pellets the white pellet is the nitrogenous waste and the brown material is the undigested food during very hot seasons animals burrow into the deeper layers of mud and the metabolic activity reduces they remain dormant till the conditions are favorable such sleep or dormancy during summer is known as aestivation in regions where the temperature becomes very low during winter as low as minus 40 degrees centigrade the animals lie dormant it is called as winter sleep or hibernation frogs are not generally seen in summer and winter they undergo aestivation and hibernation they absorb oxygen from the moist soil in deeper layers of earth and utilize the food stored in their body
The second factor which affects the life on land is temperature. Temperature greatly affects the metabolic activity. As the temperature decreases, the metabolic activity reduces drastically. The situation is opposite in hot geographical regions. If the temperature is high, the metabolic activity is also high. Differences in temperature can be observed in the same geographical area. Animals can survive to certain levels of temperature. This is known as optimal temperature which differs from animal to animal. The optimal temperature varies between 10 degree centigrade to 30 degree centigrade. The temperature varies with the altitude. For every 150 meters, temperature decreases by 1 centigrade. So, the temperature comes down as we go up a hill. The temperature at the top of a hill is low in comparison to the bottom of the hill. Plants adopt themselves to different temperature by making suitable adjustments. Plants shed leaves before the start of winter. In tropical regions, that is in hot regions, plants shed leaves in summer. In polar regions, plants germinate, grow, flower and form seeds in a short time of two months, mainly when the summer sets in. No plants can be seen in this region during winter. In polar regions, the animals have a dense coat of fur or hair and a layer of fat below their skin. The coat reduces heat loss. Some animals like hedgehog undergo hibernation. A large number of birds of different species migrate from Siberia, Australia during extreme winter to areas in India where temperatures are not very cold. Koleru, Upalapadu are two important places in Andhra Pradesh. Birds and mammals have a constant body temperature. The body temperature does not change due to any changes in atmospheric temperature. These animals are called homeothermic or warm-blooded animals. The body temperature is maintained by sweating during summer and shivering during winter. Invertebrates, fishes, amphibians and reptiles are called poikilothermic animals or cold-blooded animals. In these animals, the body temperature changes according to atmospheric temperature. Students, as you know, there are animals living permanently in caves. They have less oxygen and no light. Loss of eyes is a special adaptation among these animals like bats. These are the characters developed by animals to adapt to the environment on land. Students, in this session we shall examine the adaptations of animals that live in water. The living conditions in water differ with those on land. There are mainly two types of water habitat. They are freshwater habitat and seawater habitat. In marine waters, the salt content is high. In fresh water, the salt content is very low. The salt content in seawater determines the adaptation in the animals. Let us examine the freshwater habitat first. There are two types of freshwater habitat. Habitat in which water is stagnant as in ponds and in lakes and habitat in which there is a continuous flow as in rivers and streams. The living conditions in both these habitats differ from one another. 
limnology is the science of study of physical chemical and biological aspects of fresh water the salt content in fresh water is as low as 1.8% it is derived from earth's crust rain and from organisms living in these habitats due to decomposition of dead animals and water plants the differential concentration of salt in water and cytoplasm of cells results in osmosis the content of salt is low in fresh water than in cytoplasm due to osmosis there is a constant inflow of water into the cell due to this the cell may enlarge and burst animals have developed a mechanism to remove excess water this removal of excess water is either through contractile vacuoles as in protozoans or flame cells as in helminthes or nephridia in annelids malphigian tubules in arthropods or kidneys in higher animals as in vertebrates all fresh water animals excrete a large amount of urine with less amount of salt the nitrogenous wastes are excreted in the form of ammonia or urea the second factor that affects the life of fresh water forms is temperature in shallow ponds the temperature is generally hot during day and cold during night however in deeper lakes there is variable temperature at different depths the temperature of water at depths is more cooler than on the surface planktons and several nectons go deep into the water of ponds or lakes during the daytime and come to the upper layers of water during night two important features of oceans is their depth and salt content in addition to light temperature and pressure the salt content in sea water is about 3.5% most common salt found is sodium chloride nacl there are also chlorides carbonates and sulfates of potassium magnesium and calcium to prevent loss of water sea animals store urea and other compounds in their body fluids and cells increasing the salt content of body fluids and reducing the urine production light is essential for photosynthesis the sea can be divided into three zones according to depth up to 200 meters photic zone or euphotic zone 200 meters to 2000 meters depth aphotic zone beyond 2000 meters to the bottom of the sea abyssal zone light for photosynthesis is available in the euphotic or photic zone in oceans only planktons and few algae perform photosynthesis as the depth increases the availability of light decreases in abyssal zone there is no light and it is dark temperature decreases with increase in the depth In tropical regions the surface temperature could be as high as 30 degrees centigrade but in the abyssal zone it is as low as 2 degrees centigrade Pressure increases with the increase in depth the pressure increases for every 10 meters of depth oceans can be as deep as 
10,000 meters. At this step, the pressure could be as high as 600 to 1000 atmospheres. It is very difficult for organisms to survive at lower depths of water due to high pressure. With specialized equipment, man can go to a depth of about 200 meters, that is pressure of 20 atmospheres. The water at deeper depth of the ocean is so dense that one can walk on that water if it is on the surface. The animals that live in the sea are plankton, nectons and benthos. There are some animals which float on the water and do not sink due to pressure of droplets of oil in their cells. These are called pelagic organisms. Pelagic organisms like jellyfish have large amounts of water in their cytoplasm. Organisms like Physacea stores air and other gases in various parts of their body to keep them floating. Deep sea organisms in the benthic zones are benthos. Their bodies are flat. If the deep sea animals are brought to the surface, they die. Not only in the sea, but also on the seashore, there are some organisms. The living conditions change constantly on the seashore. The temperature and salt content of water affect their survival. Some have developed organs to firmly attach to rocks to withstand the waves. Some live in crevices between rocks and some live in burrows. Many birds also form part of the shore ecosystem. Estuary is the place where rivers join the sea generally called mouth of the river. During high tide, the sea water flows into the river. In low tide, the river water flows into the sea. Due to this, there is a change in the salt content. Animals in the estuary should adapt to the rapid changes in the salt content of water. So students, in this topic we have studied how organisms adapt to marine habitat. In the next session, we shall examine the aspects of biosphere.